Hello, I'm Dennis Berry. In recent years, the American art world has become increasingly aware of a lot of good art being made outside of New York. In the South, the Far West, and here in the Midwest, all areas long ignored for their artistic achievement, artists have made and are continuing to make significant contributions to the American art scene. Artist in Residence looks at a number of artists who have chosen to live and work outside the artistic mainstream. The art they make, the lifestyles they lead, and the problems they face in doing so are examined in this series of profiles. Ken Nivadomi is a painter living in Cleveland, Ohio. When I first started to come into my own realizations of what I wanted to do, it was sort of inspired or tripped off by a, a news broadcast I heard one morning about uh, several people uh, unconnected, apparently, being killed or being uh, shot just by pulling their car up to a stoplight. And while they were just sitting there waiting for the light to change, somebody pulled up next to them and uh, shot them. And I thought, my god, that's really nuts. That's got to be crazy. I mean, is there more to it than that? Or is it just somebody was just out for a thrill and did that? And the next thing I knew, I just sort of shifted gears and said, that's a painting, or that can get into a painting. Why don't you do that? And although I didn't particularly like putting that down on canvas, it was it. That was the idea. The senselessness of it, the craziness of it, the pessimism of it had to be put down. <laughs> The stuff that I do is, is based on you know all sorts of things. The, the incoming, the news, the, the world situation, uh, what happened to a friend someplace, uh, uh, and it's always happening. There's always this, this information coming to me. And it's, you know, it gets stirred up in, in my mind, and then I end up spitting some of it back out on the canvas. If that's the way you can. <laughs> that's the one way to say it, I suppose. And uh, I think I need that kind of thing. I need to be here to get that information. Because probably the reason that I may never get out to live in rural life is because uh, things, this is where the things happen, or a lot of things happen, is where all the information comes to. And uh, I think a lot of the work that I do has to do with that kind of information that comes in. Ken, as a kid growing up on the tough streets of the southeast side of Cleveland, did you think about being an artist in those days? No, I didn't think about being an artist. I uh, used to do art or what passed for art, just scribble around. And I liked doing it, and I had a certain talent for it. But I didn't think of it as a career. So what did you think you would do when you uh, grew up? I really uh, didn't have any idea. Uh, sort of uh, waffled through uh, partway through high school, and as soon as I got uh, to be 17, I enlisted in the uh, Air Force. I got to travel, travel around a lot spent a couple of years in places that uh, probably nobody ever heard of and wouldn't want to go back to, you know. And you found out that you were in some godforsaken place and you had to be there for two years, you know. And that kind of got hard. After my first hitch, I got out and uh, I worked for a commercial studio for a while. I had no training, no art training, but I did get a job at a commercial studio. How did you land a job at a commercial studio without any art I just took some training? of my drawings around. So you were drawing in the service? Oh, yeah, sure. It was simply uh, sketches of people wherever I was, you know, the people I knew, just scribbling around. There was, there was no, no big thing about it, but I, I ended up with a stack full of little drawings, and I would take them around from studio to studio to see what kind of job I could get. I wanted to go to school, but I couldn't do it. I was, I was really stuck to, a, to a, like an eight to five situation. And I had people constantly telling me, you don't need to go to school. We'll teach you everything you need to know here. 
but I didn't know whether what they had to teach was what I wanted to know. You know? So you're fed up with commercial art. You don't think you're learning anything from yeah, it, and you I, want to I go was to school. Very, yeah, I was very confused then about what I wanted to do. I had no money to speak of, so I uh, ended up eventually re-enlisting, although I did it in the Army the, the second time around. And uh, I got to see some more of the world. Uh, and while I was in, I was in for three years then, and about halfway through, I started to do some painting that I hadn't done before. Up to that time, it had been strictly drawing. And I liked painting. I, I had a hard time working with colors, but somewhere along the line, that clicked, and I started to be able to uh, put down what I thought ought to be down. And I thought, well, I either stay in, if I take another hitch, it's forever. Well, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. And, uh, or else get out, and uh, I've got enough money to maybe get me through a year's worth of school, because I didn't have any GI Bill then. And uh, that's what I did. I got out. So you studied art? Came back uh, to uh, Cleveland, went to Cooper School of Art. Uh, I started to do commercial work as an illustrator. Uh, I still wasn't decided yet on what, where I wanted to be in that particular, you know, whatever art was. You know, I hadn't made up any decisions about that. And the longer I went to Cooper, the more I was more interested, found myself more interested in doing uh, fine art. When school was out, when I got out of school, it became like an eight-hour job someplace, and then coming home and spending maybe another four to eight hours doing my own work. Well, lately I've been drawing the thing out, and I find it much better to draw it out, do a sketch in a sketchbook, work it up a little bit, and kind of solidify it that way. That's as opposed to, like, way back when I used to just start working on the thing. And for some reason, I've just sort of gotten into where I like to work things out to some degree in a sketchbook and then work on the canvas. You know, like I have maybe ideas for about maybe, say, three other paintings, but I can't fit them all into one painting. At least, you know, I wouldn't want to, I don't think it would work. I don't think it would come off for what I want to get out of it. So when I, I'll do another one, do another version of this, for instance, that I can't do in this one. I just can't put everything I want in this particular painting, so I'll do another painting that looks similar to this. It is the figure standing, the curtain dropping, the other figure sitting down, but I'll change something else in it. I, I think the strong point in the work is uh, maybe the imagery and uh, the composition, compositional situations that are set up, because I try to, um, that's what I want. I mean, that's what I want to see. I want to see strong movements, sometimes relatively simple movements, but then simple movements on top of simple movements, you know? And sometimes they look a little more complicated than they really are. This painting has gotten along to the degree now where I can see that it's getting done. You know, so a lot of the creative process is done. And now it's, it's looking, analyzing, changing the color here and there, deciding, you know, what more I have to do with it. The figures are going to need some more work. And I think once those figures start to click in there, that'll be probably, that's where the painting's going to end, essentially. Is this a good town for an artist to live in? Uh, it probably depends on maybe what kind of artist you are. There are all sorts of artists around here doing different kinds of art. Uh, it's probably better town for a, uh, people who are doing strictly traditional things, uh, landscapes, seascapes, whatever. It's not so good if you're trying to do something else, uh, performances, what else, uh, conceptual. It's not too good for that. I think over the years it's improved because there are people who have been coming along in the last, say, in the last 10 years 
who have been trying to do some of these things and have managed to get some sort of a foothold on it. It's not a good place to, uh, to sell your work, I would say, necessarily. I've been lucky in the last year or so, uh, uh, a man bought a sizable amount of my work. And uh, so that kind of gave me some kind of extra income other than my teaching, what I do, uh, the kind of income I get teaching. Um, but uh, my attitude is still the same. I can't really count on selling art as a way of life, you know, as a, as a way of making uh, money. And I don't even think about it. I like to teach, and I would just as soon do that. All right. You remember way back when, uh, all of a week ago or something, or whatever it was I was talking about, I wanted to see a nice, powerful drawing. And sometimes what goes through people's minds when I'm talking about doing a powerful drawing I was being, I admit, a little facetious about saying that, but what is going on, what does powerful drawing, I mean, a powerful mean? I like to teach because uh, I'm passing on something I have to somebody else, hopefully. I hope that's what I'm doing. There are people around here who are interested in art, and uh, if I can help them out, I will. I get a cer certain sense of satisfaction out of uh, seeing, uh, you know, some student start to make some kind of breakthrough and really find something for themselves by doing artwork. And you don't always see that. A student may come here and they may leave and then come back sometime later and say, you know, you said this and that and I tried this and that and it uh, didn't work quite the same way but it worked this way. And you get different, different points of view about how what you had to say was interpreted and how it came back later on. A lot of times you don't get anything. You don't get any feedback. You know. Have you ever thought about making a living just selling your art? <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. I'd have to be there first. <laughs> I'd have to be in that position first. At this, this place, it, it, uh, this school, uh, there are several of us that work, seem to work along the same lines. We're all roughly the same age. We hang around together fairly, fairly much. Uh, and we're all, uh, outside of our own work, we're doing the same thing. We're all teaching, dealing with pretty much the same students. Uh, and that seems to, you know, it's like a little enclave, it seems like to me, here. But we, we don't really know why, you know, we seem to get along pretty well. Part of it probably has to do is uh, with, uh, uh, we're all figurative type. We do all do figurative type work. And uh, that may be a main thing. Uh, several of us uh, would uh, occasionally go out and drink together or go over to each other's houses and, uh, you know, have dinner or whatever. Uh, I've seen other places where uh, one instructor couldn't uh, talk to another instructor because uh, anything that was said would bounce off. Uh, but here I think uh, we think about whatever we're talking about to each other and we find some way to use it or we have a certain amount of empathy towards each other's work. Do you actually sit down and talk about art? You no, know, we sit down and joke about art. <laughs> that's about all I could say about it. You know, talking about art is like, uh, I don't know what that's like. It's like talking about wind or something. You know? Yeah. Now, each frame of the 16 yeah. millimeter film yeah, is transcribed yeah. onto those lines. And there's a zillion little right. lines going all the way across here. Yeah, anyway, sometimes somebody will say something, you, you, you jump up and you grab your sketchbook and write it down so you don't forget it, put it away, you know. <laughs> Things, you know, incidents like that have been known to happen. Have you seen ideas happen, that, you oh, know, sure. transfer to yeah. your paintings? Uh, sometimes, yeah, occasionally they, they pop up chainsaws, things like that, sitting around talking about chainsaws.
and occasionally a chainsaw would be in the paint. You deal with very difficult subject matter. Is it difficult to paint? Yeah, it is difficult in the sense that uh, I try to avoid um, turning it into a, a very direct kind of social commentary, as in like Ben Sean or somebody. I don't want that kind of thing. I, I simply want, I'd like, if, if I'm going to make a statement, let's say, on the canvas, uh, I want it to be ambiguous. I want it to be interpreted a number of ways, if possible, by the viewer. I'd, I'd like to, to try to get at something a little more universal, although I don't know what it is. Do you think your art is erotic? Sometimes, yeah. And is that conscious? Mm, sometimes I'm aware of it, and sometimes I'm not. So, sometimes the, the eroticism of it is something I want to get into it. But I don't think it's, you know, it's just for the sake, usually it's not just for the sake of being erotic. It's, uh, a lot of times it's setting up a situation that is, um, that has a um, opposite, or that somehow indicates an opposite. Uh, something you would laugh at and cry at, almost both put down in the same place. My main interest, I think, is first and primary is to do the stuff. And I think after that, I start to wonder where I can show it. Uh, I think in Cleveland, it's, it's difficult because there aren't, there's, there's not a, a big gallery scene around here. Uh, but there are occasional places you can show. Uh, there are some places that uh, simply won't show the kind of work that I do. Sometimes uh, you'll find people wanting to edit what you put in a show because they think it's a little too strong for the people who are going to be viewing it. Not so much in, uh, like I say again, like at a New York gallery, uh, they're going to take your work because they want it. But if you go to a university gallery, you might find uh, whoever the curator might be or the uh, head of the gallery might say, uh, well, we don't handle anything that has nudes in it, let's say. It's some sort of stipulation that they have. Or they would say, well, this one particular painting is a little too strong. We have children and nuns coming through uh, this, this gallery, and we just can't show that painting. Or uh, this painting is going to be uh, hung in a bank, and uh, we can't uh, really have any this word salacious art hanging up there. So you get that kind of editing. Uh, I really don't care for censorship. If I do it, I'll do it myself. At least if I know what's coming, then I will do my own editing. And if they don't like that, well then they're, they might as well call the show off. At least that's my feeling about that. The work is there, you know. I, once, they're, if they're looking at the work, if they're looking at what I've turned out, uh, they don't need me anymore. They've got that. They can look at that and they can try to figure out what that is. You know, I, I don't see me and my work necessarily as being synonymous, you know. And that's a facet of me, something I do one aspect of what I do. Ken, let's talk about Ken Nevadomi as a person, not just as an artist. What kind of lifestyle do you lead? Oh, I don't know. It's it's very, uh, fairly quiet life. Um, I read a lot, drink a few beers, go to movies, uh, watch TV. Uh, that's about what uh, what it's like. You're not married, are you? No, I'm not. Why aren't you married? I don't think I want to be married. <laughs> Do you think it's tough for an artist to be married? I suppose it can be. You'll have to talk to somebody who's married and ask them how tough it is. You know? uh, 
some of the relationships I've seen over the years uh, have been uh, very tough on uh, the people involved. I think you have to put a lot of work into uh, a family. And I think it, uh, you just have so much energy to put into anything, and you run out, and there's something that's got to give. You have to lighten up somewhere. What's your neighborhood like? Uh, it's, it's a conglomeration. The neighborhood is a conglomeration of um, all sorts of people. There, there seem to be students living there. There are uh, 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 foreigners who have uh, come over to the United States. Uh, there are business executives. There are um, bikers. Uh, there's a little bit of everything. Do your neighbors know that you're an artist? Uh, yeah, some of them do. Some of them are aware of that. Uh, although I don't think they know just what it is I do. Although they see these strange paintings coming out of the apartment every now and then and coming back in again. I don't know if they know what to think about that. They think you're strange? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they think. <laughs> they probably think I'm strange, yeah. And sometimes the feedback I get tells me that I must be strange. <laughs> do you think people in general, society in general, reacts to you differently because you're, because you're an artist? Yeah, I think occasionally they do. Uh, you're an artist, what are you doing here? You know, or, uh, what kind of art do you do? And if you try to talk to them about it, they, you, you've immediately lost them. Uh, you try to talk on some or talk about it some way that they can grasp it a little bit. When they hear artists, they think you're painting flowers and still lifes and, or doing greeting cards or whatever. You know. And uh, you say, if you're in the mood to talk, if I'm in the mood to talk that night, I'll say, no, I don't do that. I do other sorts of things. And maybe get into a little talk about that. Or if I'm not in the mood, I say, uh, yeah, do that. The only thing I can say, like, I, I've been, um, as far as the work that I do, why I do what I do, is because I think it's, it's necessary. I think somebody has to uh, try to deal with something that resembles the human condition, you know, in, in, in the not so pretty ways that it sometimes is, you know. It seems like we get media to death, commercialized to death, and everybody thinks they're going for this for that thing. We're made to kind of believe that we got to have whiter teeth and, uh, and uh, pretty smelling armpits and stuff like that. And that's not really the way it is at all. The government uh, maybe sometimes tells you one thing and then you find out it was something else. Who's going to say anything about that? I mean, people do say something about that. What am I going to say about it? And the only way I really have to say anything, if it happens to be about that, is through my work, is through the paint. I don't get too intent on the message. I mean, it's there, whatever it is. And maybe this year it will strike somebody as meaning one thing, and uh, a year from now it will strike somebody as meaning something entirely different, which is fine. If I can do anything to stem the rumors that painting is dead, you know, I would like to do that. Because it's not dead, it's just that there's so much to do. If anybody would just take the time to, uh, to think about what they really want to paint and then put something into it. Don't put into it that you are simply a school-taught artist. You have to go further than that and think about what you really want to do. And a lot of times I think you might find out that the thing you really want to do may go against a lot of other people's grain as far as you know, your art goes. 
But there's plenty of room, there's plenty of room for subjective art, and that's, I think, this pretty much what this is. artist does, they're recording their time. Whether they want to think about it that way or not, that's the way it's going to come out. Uh, and my little niche seems to be to do that thing. The, the chaos, the, the opposite of what society presents itself as, enters into it somehow. Sometimes to be working on something, uh, you say, like I look back and say, well, for the last 10 years I've done X amount of paintings. Uh, sometimes I begin to feel jaded about what I'm doing. Uh, I'll say, well, maybe I ought to quit. Maybe I ought to stop doing this, at least for a time, and do something else, or else just relax, or concentrate on teaching, or concentrate on whatever else I can come up with. But. Uh, it always comes back. This stuff pursues me, you know, it demands, it makes a certain demand on me that I do, so I do it. I, I really push myself to produce stuff. There are things I want to get down, uh, I keep a sketchbook going, uh, ideas occur, and I just have to paint them. And I, to me, the way it comes across to me is I will paint them. I will do it. Life's just too short, you know.